What is up, my people? Welcome back to the Drew Dillman YouTube channel where we look at bike racing. Today, I'm at Hyde Park Blast. Actually, it was this weekend. This is a race up in Cincinnati, Ohio. It's a regional race. It's usually pulls in a lot of riders from Indiana, Kentucky, Ohio. Seeing as to how there's not really that many crits in Kentucky, I got to go to Indiana and Ohio to get my crit racing in. So this has always been one that I've... I've done it quite a few times. I haven't done it since before COVID because the last few years of being on the Texas Roadhouse Cycling Team had me doing some other races this weekend. But you'll notice my homeboy Kyle Perry, former teammate of mine, he's right ahead of me in the orange kit. Um, he is a former, yeah, former teammate. He's now currently on that what was the Texas Roadhouse Team, now the Rainstorm Racing Team. So he's a guy that I'm looking out for, but we're also good friends. And so like me and him being together in the same group is always a plus because we trust each other, know each other. So I'm going to try to follow his wheel. He's going to make his way uh, a little bit further ahead than me up this hill. You can see we're crawling like with that many people. It had just stormed like big time right before we raced as well. They had to actually postpone our race by 15 minutes. It was supposed to be an 8.30 start. We started at 8.45. It's crazy that it's still this light outside at 8.45, but it's going to get dark very quickly. Uh, and they shortened our race up. It was supposed to be 90 minutes. We ended up racing for 75, uh, which, which I don't think made that big of a difference. But yeah, you can tell the roads are definitely very wet. There's a couple pretty fast turns. This is the fastest turn of the race right here, but it's also super wide. Like you hit this road and it just the road kind of just never ends and so you don't really have to take your breaks but with the water i was a little nervous and the first few laps i'm just figuring it out All right, here's where I start to just really blow some matches. Um, yeah, you can see there are gaps ahead of me. And I'm thinking, man, if we don't make it to this front group, the race might very well just be over right here. And we'll never, we'll just never make it to the front of the race. And I'm kind of freaking out. So I pass a lot of dudes. I'm, I'm, I'm committed to just like time trialing it down. Oh, we see a little crossover of some wheels. And then this guy, somehow his bike just ends up flying through the air, but all he did was cross over wheels with somebody and then tip over. But back to what I was saying, I'm freaking out. Look at me here go. I'm like, oh my gosh, look at another big gap to chase down. And then ahead of them is another big gap. And I'm like, man, we are never going to make it to this front group. This isn't even the front group. The front group is ahead of this group. And I'm like, we might never make it there. And I'm freaking out. So I'm, I'm going pretty hard to try and get to that front group. It's super strung out. There's gaps. These two guys hit this that that corner way slower than I'd like now there's a bigger gap to the guy in front of me I do want to point out nice looking state bike right there if you would like to get a nice looking state bike you can use code raddaddizzle10 check out this nice little clip that I made last week with my drone of my state undefeated this was the, the bike that I was racing at this race and you can get one for yourself pretty awesome right this bike right now this is how cool this is this bike is on sale right now for a thousand bucks. And with my Rad Dad Dizzle 10 code, you can get this bike for 10% off, which makes it less than $900 for a carbon race road bike. That is pretty sweet. Of course, that's just the frame set, but you know, small print at the bottom, whatever. Um, so back to the race, I'm forced to chase down this really big gap. My heart rate's already up to 191. We're six minutes into the race. Here's another crash. 
that turn it was basically a u-turn it was a u-turn not basically and you can see there's already other guys right there who have already crashed this guy's popped this guy's popped it's chaotic we're like six and a half minutes and this race is just blown to shreds there's people crashing so this moment uh about seven minutes in was when i was like oh snap my legs hurt kyle perry comes around me these two guys are standing up and i'm standing up behind them as well but like you know that feeling when your legs just kind of feel like they're filled with cement? That was what was happening. And my heart rate's pinned, and I'm thinking, oh boy, like I am not as fit as I thought I was. I thought that I could just time trial my way up to the front of this bike race without any worries, and here I am struggling seven minutes in. I can't even hold this wheel now. I'm, I'm letting the gap open. That's embarrassing. But not to worry, with a big U-turn like this at the end of the straightaway, you can let a gap open and then just hit the brakes a little later than the guys in front of you. What do you know? Another crash. Oh my goodness. We're all learning how to ride our bikes in the wet conditions this, this time. Um, but like I was saying, you can kind of touch your brakes later and uh, let that gap come down. It was pretty chaotic because as because there were so many people crashing and because the race was so strung out already, the officials were just putting in globs of people right into the, the main group right here, which I thought was like a pretty unfair thing to do because here I am like time trialing just to stay in this front group, chasing down gaps, but then the people who had crashed a lap before get pushed in right into the front group. So, I mean, in hindsight, it would have been pretty strategic to have slid out through that turn and then just get thrown into the front group. And then I wouldn't have had to time trial all the way to the front um, like I did. And it wasn't long after I got to the front group, we did make it to the front group, that uh, there's a gap established and 10 riders roll off the front of this group. You can kind of see I'm pinned. I'm not about to... I'm not about to do a bunch of work. But yeah, at this point, there's 10 riders that have got a pretty good gap up the road. Uh, we're only 11 minutes in. And I, on top of this, I'm pretty sure Josh Burnett on that Mito Q New Zealand team, he had already attacked that group and was off solo. He attacked on the fifth lap. And spoiler, he soloed the entire race. This is all this, also the same guy that put the smack down on Adam Roberge and Dylan Johnson down at BWR the week before this race. So I wasn't too surprised, but to be able to solo in a five or six hour race and then to solo in a one hour race, pretty impressive. You can see this big dude in white, uh, big boy. He is the New Zealand national crit champ. So he's wearing that all white kit. And of course he's pumping the brakes on the front of this group to let the, uh, let the brake roll up the road. I think they had like four dudes in the breakaway of 10 and a guy off the front. So not bad strategy. My boy James Krause, another local Louisville friend of mine, also former Roadhouse teammates with him. I like to think that maybe he has red bibs because he saw how good they looked and said, you know what, I'm going to get me some red bibs too. Uh, but we see him do a little slidey slide right there, locking up the rear brake. Uh, he wasn't the only one to do that, um, and he only did it for a split second and totally didn't even throw him off. He was... Um, that's what you do. You know, maybe make a little bit of a mistake like that, lock up that rear brake, slide a little bit, but you can't let it get in your head. You let that little thing get in your head and then it affects the rest of your race. You can't let that happen and it doesn't look like he lets that happen. Now, it's a pretty far-fetched thing, um, but, you know, I do want to try to pop across to this 
lead group of 10 that's off the front. Um, and right there, I had a free ride to the front of this group. I didn't even really have to pedal. I just kind of coasted my way to the top three. Now I'm in a good position to attack. So I'm, I'm going to attack. I'm going to go off to the left here. Uh, my attack, I don't even hit 700 watts, and I'm already, you know, kind of pinned at, at 190 beats per minute. Um, I only make it to the end of that straightaway. I, I pop out of this turn. I know that if you can accelerate out of that U-turn, uh, you can obviously force some gaps open, but it doesn't work. Again, I, I'm just starting to like come to the realization or the reality that I'm just not as fit as I had hoped I would be going into this. Um, I know all you YouTube people out there are gonna just be so mad that I'm making excuses, but I started this race thinking I was a certain level of fitness and very quickly realized that that was not accurate. And I am just letting you know that that's why I was making some of the decisions that I was making in this race because I was thinking, yep, it ain't there. So now I'm just sitting in. I tried that attack. It didn't go good. Barely got anything out of it. And so at this point, I'm thinking, I all like my only card is to sit in and hope we do chase down uh, the leaders. But I was kind of thinking that ain't gonna happen. Uh, we're racing for 11th place at this point, so uh, I'm just chilling. Now I did want to point this out as well. This above and beyond guy uh, had some crazy narrow handlebars. Um, because of those narrow handlebars, he's not able to turn as good. And so he, he hits that downhill kind of wobbly and hits that turn a little slow, lets the gap open, flicks his elbow, and makes me chase the gap. I was a little annoyed by that. And I'm thinking like, how narrow is too narrow? You know, at what point do we say, look, bro, you can't handle your bike that good when, you're, when your hands are, are glued to each other. So uh, I was a little annoyed about that. Um, homeboy should just... Uh, I mean, wh why are you so concerned about aero gains if you can't even hold a wheel? I mean, like, come on, dude. Maybe you should worry about FTP gains instead of aero gains. Um, or, or, like, turning gains. That would be a good one. So, there's only, I think, about nine laps left. And the, uh, the announcer was saying, like, we might catch the chase group. So... And we can see them like we're, we're getting we can actually visibly see them getting closer and closer. Um, oh, here's that guy throwing that guy should be relegated because he threw his 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 uh, gel pack on the ground <laughs> littering. That's against the rules. Um, yeah, it's looking like we're going to catch the chase group. So I'm going to start to move up into this into the front of this of this main group. I'm sitting about fourth or fifth wheel. My homeboy James Krause is on the front just welding this thing back together. He pulls for, I don't know, three laps and brings it all back together, which is pretty wicked awesome. There he is. Nice work, James. At the end of this straightaway, you can see we're going to zoom in. We can see the, the lead group right there. Of course, Josh Burnett's like 30 seconds up the road. He's got the win already in the bag. Um, so James Krause is going to do all that work. I'm thinking the whole time, all right, James, just get us close enough and I'll pop across into that, into that lead group. But these other two guys, James basically gets us all the way there. And then these two guys pop around him and I'm going to follow their wheel and we're in this lead group. And then boop, boop, boop. Um, yeah, my GoPro dies. So I, I hate that I just drug this out and now you're 10 minutes in 15 minutes into this youtube video and you are not even get to see the ending of it and then it turns out that we catch this lead group now we're racing for we went from racing for 11th to now we're racing for second place so immediately what i do is when we hit this next straightaway i'm just gonna drift my way straight up to the front of the group and then i'm gonna sit top five we've got five laps to go i'm sitting top five i don't think i left the top five out of that main group for the all the way until one to go uh my big boy forget his name an all white new zealand kit um the new zealand crit national champ that's on mito q of course he's got a teammate up the road but they can kind of send flyers because he's because he's so far up the road that now it's like we know we're racing for seconds so even if they attack we're not going to catch that guy so big boy in white attacks and i follow him thinking 
what an awesome guy to get off the front with with three laps to go four laps to go except for again very quickly realized that i'm not as fit as i thought i was and me and him are quickly chased down um, i didn't have as much of that snap that i'm used to having either so like when i would try to get onto his wheel instead of just popping onto his wheel is more of like a slow drag to get to his wheel and what ends up happening when you do that is the whole group gets on your wheel and then they just get a free ride up to that guy's wheel so i did that with three or four laps to go but didn't like it i didn't redline after that i was able to recover get back into that front top five um of that of that main group Cal perry's right there so i'm like i know i'm in good position because he's always in good position in races like this and then with one to go, a Mito Q guy just whop, like up the right hand side, right under the one to go banner. And I'm like, oh, my instinct was like to go with him. And at that moment I, I reacted to my instinct and I said, okay, let's do this. And I got on his wheel. And again, it took me a little bit to get there. And by the time, I don't even know actually if I got there, but I got pretty close. I made it around that U-turn and then just like the red flag or the what up no, no no the white flag went up i redlined and the white flag went up there we go and uh yeah that was the end of that and so i had pretty much burned my the one match i had for the sprint or for the last effort up that little climb i had pretty much burned that to get on that guy's wheel and it didn't work uh so the whole group swarms me and i just soft pedal it in for like i don't know i didn't even look so not a great weekend of crit racing but it was fun i'm glad i did it and one of the things that i i'm hoping happens from these crit races is that they help me to gain some fitness and so um although it was a suffer fest i should be getting stronger because of these efforts and I like to race my bike and I like to make videos from racing my bike. And so that was a whole nother reason for doing the video as well. Hopefully I'll figure out the GoPro settings. Again, if you like the video, um, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. If you really like the video, maybe, uh, maybe consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue to um, produce content like this for you to watch. Thanks again. Thanks to all my sponsors. See you guys in the next one.